In this video, we are going to talk about volume by this method, and this is a type 2 this method. So type 2 this method is the area is rotate about a vertical revolution axis. So for example, the y-axis. So when that is the case, we will be using a dy integral, all right? Vertical revolution axis. Let's take a look at this uh, example. So we have a uh, a function x is equals to 2 square root of y, x equals to 0, y equals to 9, and then we rotate about the y-axis. So x equals to 2 times square root of y. So in case you are wondering how do you graph x equals to some y function, uh, I don't know how to use a graphing calculator to graph that, but you can use a free app. Uh, you can also do that on your computer. The app is called Decimal, D-E-S-M-O, Decimals. Just Google that online, it's completely free. And then you can just type just type the function x equals to some y, and then they will graph that for you. And then we have x equals to zero. So by the way, if you take a look at the box, this is very important because you have to do this all the time. x equals to zero is the y-axis. And then we have another horizontal line, y equals to line nine. So we can see that uh, we have a region bounded by this three curves, all right? x equals to zero, y equals to nine, and x is equals to two times square root of y, and then we rotate about the y-axis, so the rotation symbol is in green, so I am trying to spin this area 360 degree to get a volume, right? So how do we find the area? So to find the area, we have to use the top curve minus the bottom curve, is that true? Uh, the answer is no. You have to use the right curve minus the left curve. Which one is on the right? Which one is on, on the left? If you use top curve minus the bottom curve, it looks like you are using the y equals to 9 minus x equals to 2y. That is not going, that's, that is not going to work because the red function is y equal. The orange function is x equal. That is not going to work. So this will be a right minus left. Which one is on the right? So let's see. Let's draw a um, line. So we have a horizontal line. And then starting with a point right here. And then another point. And then we draw a line to line this up. Which one is touching the right? Uh, the point on the x equals to 2y. The one touching the left is x equals to 0. And then the rectangle looks like this. So you'll be using the midpoint rule method. That's how we draw our rectangle, right? And then uh, here is your rectangle. Wow, that looks terrible. Let's do this. And then here is your rectangle. Okay. All right. So we have a right curve that is x equals to 2 square root of y. And then we have a left curve that is x equals to 0. Check your work. x equal x equal. We are on the right check. So since we are setting up a dy interval, y goes from where to where? So y goes from y equals to what? y e looks like we are going from y equals to 0 to y equals to 9, right? So y equals to 0, but you don't see that on the picture. So let me show you how you get it to y equals to 9. So y equals to 0, the, do you see the bounded region? So the lower cutoff must be right here. y equals to 0. So y equals to 0, then we have y equals to 0 to y equals to 9. And what about the radius? So the radius is equals to right curve equals to right curve minus left curve, which is equals to 2 square root of y minus 0. Do not skip the 0. x equals to 2 root y minus x equals to zero, all right? x equal, x equal. And then when you set up an integral, so the volume is equals to integral, we have y equals to zero to y equals to nine, and then pi r squared. So we have to do pi 
times the radius square, right? So radius square, and then this is a dy, so the radius is 2 would y minus 0. So this is set up, but do not evaluate. I don't recommend you to skip the 0, but if you are doing homework online, the system might want you to, might, they might ask you to simplify the integrand. I don't know, you have to read the problem. But when I show my work in class, when I ask my student to do their work on exam and quizzes, I ask them, do not simplify the integrand because three days later you look back to your notes you see why you have you have right curve minus left curve if you just put a two y two square root of y in there you might say okay a uh, two square root of y is one curve where is the other curve then you have to think right if you write zero minus zero then you don't need to think because the work is already there Okay, so that is the first example problem. One example is never enough, and therefore, let's move on to the next example. So in the next example right here, I have a uh, three curve, x is equal to, y is equal to x to the third, y is equal to eight, and x is equal to zero. Rotate about the y-axis, look at the green, green uh, spinning arrow. So that is a vertical revolution axis. And therefore, this is a dy problem. So we have a problem right here. This is a dy problem. But how come we have an x in there? We cannot have x anywhere in the integrand. Okay, but one other thing is y equals to x to the third. The, so on, on the graph, we have y equals to 8 horizontal line, x equals to 0 vertical line that is true. But hey, y equals to x to the 8, that is not the graph of, is that the graph of y equals to x, x to the third? That is true, but can you use y equals to x to the third? That is the graph, but you cannot use it. Then how do you fix this problem? So to fix this problem, you have to do the following. You have to do a rewrite. So we have y equals to x to the third. We have to put x in terms of y. So how do you do that? So to do this, remember your algebra, you have to take both sides raised to the one third power. And then you have y to the one third equals to x. So that means you have x equals to the cube root of y, which is right over there. And then what do you do? You have to figure out the what? Where is the rectangle? The rectangle is right here. So you draw. So we can see there is an area bounded by the yellow, the red, and the blue curve, right? So let's build our rectangle. Not an eraser. So we have this and this. So that helps me to determine the right curve and the left curve. So this is my area. The area. This is my rectangle. So we can see the right curve is equals to x equals to the cube root of y and then the left curve is x equals to zero again x equal x equal so let me give you uh one minute to not one minute 10 seconds to think about uh the y goes from where to where y goes from where to where so in this problem y goes from zero right y goes from zero to eight right so this is from y equals to zero to y equals to eight and then quickly on your paper can you write the radius for me can you write the radius for me the radius is uh what the radius is right minus left so the radius that is equals to right curve minus left curve that is equals to the cube root of y minus zero that is x equals to cube root of y minus x equals to zero and by the way this is x equals to the cube root of y okay and then we have all the ingredients ready now let's do the volume so we have uh, from y equals to 0 to y equals to 8, we have pi radius square, right? And then a dy, so we have the cube root of y minus 0. Do not simplify the integral. Oh, in case you are wondering, why do we need to use the right curve minus the left curve? Look at the... Uh, 
look at the purple or the lavender rectangle. How do you measure the length of that rectangle? You will be using this, right? So you have this rectangle, this point and this point. So that point corresponds to an X value. This point corresponds to an X value. To measure the length, we have to use the bigger X minus the smaller X. That's why you have to use right minus left. And then what about the 3D object? So the 3D object, uh, when in, in my class, I never ask my students to, to sketch the 3D objects on the exam because in some cases that is hard to sketch. Uh, all you have to do is use your imagination. Hey, this, this is how that's going to work. So you have this, right? You have this area. This is a two dimensional. So two dimensional, you spin that and then you get a three dimensional object. So you have one piece of paper holding on your hand and then you spin that piece of paper 360 degree, then the two dimensional becomes a three dimensional. All right. And then uh, when you spin, so that creates, there must be a radius, right? What is the radius? This piece of paper, this 2D paper is the radius. And then how do you find the radius? You use the right curve minus the left curve, which is a piece of area. You spin that, you get a three-dimensional object. All right, so that is the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful, let me know in the comment below, like the videos, subscribe to my channel. Appreciate your help and support. I will see you all in the next video. Signing off for now.